Good morning. Welcome to my channel. <laughs> What's going on with this lady? Raising her eyebrows. It's too early in the morning for that. Okay, so I want to talk another um, feeling video. I don't know. I have a tendency of talking my stuff out. Now, there, there was times when I will hold the anger in me. I now that I'm thinking about it, when I was younger, I used to. Let me see. I used to. I'm trying to think if I did talk it out. I did talk it out. I had somebody to talk to. As far as church is concerned, because me and Michelle was close. She was the only one I really could talk to. I have. A young lady by the name of Sister Kershaw. I'm sure you heard me talk of her. We talk things out, but it's more so opinionated. And, um... Based on how she may have felt in the past about situations. But one thing I have to say is that she be hitting the nail on the head. I told her yesterday, we was talking yesterday about something in reference to what happened, something that happened yesterday at the other church, in reference to our church. And I asked her something, and she was short. She was short by one, let me put it that way. And um, I told her, I said, that she need to get herself saved. Dad, what did I tell her? I'm paraphrasing because I can't remember what I said word for word. She need to get herself sa <coughs> saved and bring. No, come back in the church and get herself saved because God got to work for her. And the reason why that was said is because there's certain things that the Lord tell her and she will tell me and it will be truth you know it will be truth there's a lot of things that she's seen I guess I'll start this feeling video with her because she is someone that came into the church she's not nobody that was birthed in the church she's no one that got saved in the church underneath Bishop Mingo. She don't know anything about House of Prayer when she came in. So she would tell me, the thing she would tell me is that when she came into church, she thought Bishop Anderson was, I guess, the founder, I guess that you would call it, like the founder of the church. He's the one that built the church, got it to go in, you know, because she didn't know nothing about Bishop Mingo. She didn't know nothing about Mother Wilson. She didn't know that I came from the ancestors of that church, that I raised up in that church. My family is actually the, the how can you say, the backbone of the church. She had no idea. So, when I returned back to the church, because I left the church, hmm, I think Bishop Mingo died in 79. No, she died in 89, right? She died in 89. So, 63, 73, 83. 3, 45, 67, 89. I was 26 years old. So, I was still young. And to be honest... I was young in heart. I was young in mind. I was very mature for my age, but I didn't grow to full maturity yet. 
So I still had a little of of hurt in me. I still had a little of anger in me. You know, nothing against Bishop Mingo and nothing against Mother Wilson. And I have to say, you know how some children say, oh, I hated my grandmother, or I disliked it, my grandmother, or my aunt. Or they say things like, oh, my grandmother used to get me mad because she wouldn't let me go here. She wouldn't let me do this. She wouldn't let me wear pants. She wouldn't let me wear jewelry. She wouldn't let me wear nail polish. She wouldn't let me wear, um, what's the other thing? Makeup. Oh, I, ooh, it used to make me so mad. To be honest, the way my grandmother raised me, I'm satisfied with that. Now, I have to get into my upbringing in order to bring Sister Kershaw in. So, um, I was kind of happy with that because, you know, I don't know. I just was the weirdest child. I was the weirdest child, you know. And when I say weird, nothing didn't really bother me. I was very scary, very scary. So, my scaredness was my... How can I say it? My my helpmate. Because, because of my scaredness and the afraidness of God and people, I was able to keep myself out of danger. And I was able to be open mind to things, open minded to things that came in my path that would help me remember God. So, when my aunt died in 89, she had said, come back. Before she died, I went to visit her in her house. And it was just pressing on me to go and see her, go and see her. Because my father had came in the room. Well, actually, I was lying on the floor. It was just the weirdest. You know, my life is just so crazy. My father was living with me now. And I had a bed to sleep in, but I was on the floor. And what kind of foolishness was that? And I, I guess... Now that I'm thinking about it, I guess at that time was the beginning of God dealing with the the spirit realm of me. He was working with me through the spirit realm, right? And because I didn't understand the spiritual aspect of the net of the flesh, where you say walk in the spirit and you won't fulfill the the I'm saying, walk in the spirit and you won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. So. I didn't understand the spiritual aspect of my lustful flesh. So I couldn't really pinpoint what my feelings was. But I was on the floor, sleeping on the floor because I felt like I was losing something. I felt like, uh, you know, I don't know, something was about to transpire and it was going to be going forever and all that. I, it, it just, you know, I has, wasn't too much talking to my grandmother you know, me and my husband had done separated. You know, I was overwhelmed with these three kids. I, I couldn't work because I, I didn't have no sitter. No babysitter would watch my children. Not to say that they was, they was, um, uh, what's the word for kids? I'm going to say non-behavable. They wasn't that type of, they wasn't that, they, children, they were just children. You know, they, they had their own ways that I know I could deal with. And I knew how to deal with it. So I didn't let nobody else be exposed to them because I knew Tandra, right? Not so much Mary and Terrence. They was easy to get along with, but I knew how Tandra was. I knew her temper. If you didn't understand the girl, I knew how to deal with the girl, you would want to beat the girl, right? And I wasn't having nobody put their hands on her. So I didn't really work. Couldn't work, right? Because my, my kids were step, step lapis. So when, when, my, when me and my husband separated, my youngest child was three. That's 86, 83, 84, 85, 86, yes. So my son was born in 83. Tandra was born in 84. And Mary was born in 85. So you see... I had these little kids with me and my when my husband separated from me. So my son was three. Tanja was two. 
and Mary was one. So now the man of my life, the man of my household, the head of my household, my family is now being separated. No, 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 what's the word? No fault of mine's. Uh, so now I have all this on me. So now 86, 87, 88, 89. So now we 89. So three, four, five, six. So my son is six. My daughter, Tandra, is five. She's the one that's deceased. And Mary is four. Danielle was not born yet. So, um, okay, so we separated. So now the reason why I'm saying all of this is because before that happened, I wasn't going to church. I was having my issues with my husband. I was having my, you know, I was being overwhelmed. I couldn't get a job. But me and my husband was arguing, fighting. He was on drugs. My my father had his girlfriend here that was just, allowing my husband to just smoke up and one day my husband and my father's girlfriend at that you know they were smoking crack I was gonna say at that time crack was out in a big thing I don't know the I don't know whether this drug is still out or not but at that time in the 80s it was very thick it was very widely used by my husband, put it like that. So this is just my family, my feelings, my life. So him and my father's girlfriend would smoke this in the house, right? And I'm trying to remember if this particular time, yeah, I was in the living room. I think I had, because Tandra stayed underneath me. You know, Tandra and Mary, they stayed on I mean, Terrence was Terrence wasn't staying with me. Terrence was with my grandmother. After the situation happened with Tandra, my grandmother told me to bring Terrence to her, my son. So she raised Terrence from about I'm gonna say about four years old. Till about, I'm trying to think. I don't even want to waste time in calculation. But she kept him, right? Took him out of the house. So Tandra was about two months old when my husband did what he did to her. So two to three months, I'm going to say, because she was just a baby. I don't think she was walking. So that had to be if Tandra was born in 84. So she was born in February, March, April, May, June. So we're gonna we're gonna say she, I'm well. I, I can't say two months. I'm gonna say six months because she's two months. That's a that's a little bit too little to do such a thing. I mean, unless your mind is that great. So I gotta say she was between six months to a nope. She was six months because the next time she was a year. Thank you, Holy Ghost. So not to dwell too much on that. That's a story time of another time. Which I think I spoke on it already, but I don't think I got into details. But anyway, um, and that's a that's a video. I think it's entitled "How My Husband Almost Killed My Daughter," something like that. I killed my daughter. So, um, she. Let me see. What was I saying? So we went. Mm, I forgot my thought pattern. But anyway, let me go on. So we we separated. And during the time, my aunt, so just like I said, now we in the house, nobody's there, my father's there, and I'm on the floor, right? And, um, I mean, it's crazy, now that I'm thinking about it, it's, it's so, it's so vivid in my head. Hey, Siri. What does vivid mean? Vivid means producing powerful feelings are strong, clear images in the mind. 
Okay, so I just want to make sure I'm using the right word. It that that situation is so vivid in my mind like it happened yesterday. So I'm on this floor, I'm lying on the floor. Well, I guess I was lying on the floor. No, it wasn't because I had no carpet, because I didn't have no carpet. But it was, you know, it was okay. So I'm on the floor, and um, my father walks in, and he sits on the edge of the couch. I'm lying on the floor looking at him. And I'm saying to myself, what's wrong with Daddy? Why Daddy look like that? Right? And I'm like saying to myself, I don't want to be bothered. Just leave me alone. I was just in a lazy mode. I didn't feel like mood. I didn't feel like doing nothing. I didn't feel like moving. I was in a depressed stage. And I didn't even realize that, you know. But I have to say, I never had thoughts of killing myself. I had thoughts of giving up. But it was more so giving up on the situation I am. Like just take my kids in and let somebody else take care of them and I just live alone and without a man I ain't got to worry about nothing just stay in my house by myself I was a loner I was a, I was an inverted so I I loved it to be by myself so I said dad are you all right and he just he sat there and he turned and looked at me he said um dad what do you call aunt may he called her aunt may he said Aunt May is not doing good. So now I sat up. This is Bishop Mingo. I said, what do you mean? She said, no, she's not She's not doing good. I'm, we're not even sure how long she's going to be here. So if you want to see her, you better get up and go see her. Because we don't know when she's leaving. So he walked away. He said, that's all he said. He, he, after he said that, he walked away. And um, went back in his room. So I, I lied there for a while. And that's some extra stuff that got on my mind. And now I'm saying, oh, my goodness. Now I've got to leave. How is this going to affect mommy? I got to be there for mommy. I said, oh, my goodness. If God forbid. I mean, I just started going down the line. I said, if God forbid this takes mommy out, then I'm not going to have nobody. I mean, I would <laughs> I was already seeing my life without mommy and Gaga. So I got myself, I said, let me get up. You know what I'm saying? Maybe if I go see her, <laughs> maybe I can help her live longer and I can be there for mommy, right? So I got up and I went to Gaga house and I walked in. I believe mommy was there. Yeah, mommy was there. I went and I spoke to her and kissed her. I always gave her a kiss. And, um... Oh, I miss her so much. Oh, my God. Now that I'm really thinking, my Lord, have mercy. It's nothing like a grandma or somebody that show love to you. Anyway. Oh, she was here today. Oh, my goodness. She would have helped me be a better person than I am today. You know what I'm saying? I, I believed in her. I trusted her. I lived for her. You know what I'm saying? So, anyway. So, I went on. And when I got to the door, the bedroom entrance of my aunt, Mother Giles was there, which was her adopted daughter. And um, it was, uh, see, I can name the people because I believe the people, yeah, the people are dead today. So Mother Giles is deceased. It was Aunt Ernestine and Aunt Mayclay. They both deceased today, if I'm correct. I think they, no, I don't think our May Clay died yet. I think our Ernest C. died. So there was some other people in the living room part, if I'm correct, besides my grandmother, but I can't remember who it was. It could have been, I don't know. I don't, maybe not. But anyway, I went in the room and Gaga was turned towards the wall. Because when you walk into her room, her bed is right there. And you got she got this nice wool grayish uh uh what you call it? dresser. She had big high lamps that was green, which I I helped furnish her living room. I mean I helped furnish her living room and her bedroom. Meaning that she asked me to go with her to pick out the furniture. 
and the furniture that I picked, she she bought and put in her house. That was it. Was, she did. She said, "Come, on, I want you to come with me to get some furniture." And I was really excited because I never went furniture shopping with Gaga. Yep, she, she, the 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 everything. Okay, so, so when you walk in her house, I mean her bedroom, her bed, her bed was here, and where I'm sitting at was the dresser. So you had to, I had to go around her, around the length of it, and it, and it kind of went like a a U. And I went to that side. So as I'm coming in, Mother Jow says to her, a mama, and she said, mm. She said, Sharon is here. She said, huh, who? She said, Sharon. She said, okay, okay. So she went like that. So I went, I walked around because she was lying on her side. So I walked over to her and she had her eyes closed. And I said, Gaga? She said, hmm? I said, how you doing? She said, I'm here. I'm here. You know how people say I'm blessed and highly favored and all this stuff when you ask them how they do it. She just said, I'm here. Right? I said, okay. So she went back to silence. And then Mother Giles told me, said, yeah, she's falling into sleep. She's probably sleeping. So I sat there. I mean, I stood there. And um, I just looked at her and she breathed. And then she, I guess she woke up or whatever, and she said, you all right? I said, yes, ma'am. She said, okay. Okay. And the way she said, okay, it was like, I'm glad to see you. I'm glad to hear your voice. Like, that was the end of our conversation. So then Mother Giles said, okay, you can come out now, because she done talking, right? So as I was walking out, and as I got to the entrance of her room to leave, she said something. And Mother Jow said, Sharon? So I stopped. And so she went to her. She said, what you say, Mommy? And um, she said, um, come back. So she said, what you say? She said, come back. So then Mother Jow said to me, so I looked at her. I said, what you say? She said, come back. That stuck with me. Bam, it hit me like a hammer. Not in my head, in my heart. So that Sunday, I went to church. And every Sunday, Bishop Anderson, he was assistant pastor. He didn't, he didn't, um, he didn't. I don't even think you get to, I don't know. I don't think there's an ordination for assistant pastor. I don't think so. But it could have been. I just could not have been there. When... Bishop Anderson was a was ordained for assistant pastor. Well, he was an elder. So he became assistant pastor. Right. I don't even think Pastor Glover was ordained. I think Bishop Anderson just got up and said one Sunday that we have a assistant pastor in the house and it's gonna be our Pastor Glover, our elder Glover. So that's another thing, just to throw this in my right quick. I, I, I was kind of like thrown off when Bishop said to me that I was going to be the assistant pastor because I didn't go through that protocol of elder, which I always said that we have a tendency of going through the protocol when we should go through the protocol of God. If, if God instructed the leader to ordain somebody as an evangelist or an elder, then you should do such. It's not so much as a rank. This is not a paying job. This is a spiritual job. This is a kingdom building job. So therefore, if somebody in the kingdom is being is being ordained by God and elevated by God, then the leaders should elevate that person based on where God's standards is with that person, not based on their standards. So if God say, I want Sister Sue to be an evangelist and Sister Sue is just a sister, then you ordain her as an evangelist. You don't say, well, no, she can't be an evangelist. She has to be a missionary first. If there's a gentleman in there and God say, I want I want them to be a minister or evangelist, you ordain them. No, they can't be evangelists. They have to be a deacon first and they gotta be a minister, then they gotta be, then they can become evangelists. That, that, I feel that's the reason why our church ain't moving nowhere because 
we have talent. And when I say talent, I mean God's talent. We have God's elevation in the house, but leadership is, is trying to elevate people based on their thoughts of salvation, based on what they or how they feel a person should be. But anyway, this, with that being said, let me move on. So, yeah, that's how I said Bishop was elder. So he was assistant pastor. So B Bishop Anderson at the time, Elder Anderson, but but he wasn't even called Elder Anderson. He was called Assistant Pastor Anderson. Oh, we could have said our Elder Anderson, Assistant Pastor. I don't know. I, I think it was Assistant Pastor, we would say. Give honor to God to our Assistant Pastor, Elder Anderson. Right. Right. That's how we say it. So, he would call an altar call every Sunday. And that was, in a sense, the protocol of Bishop Mingo. Every Sunday after she finished preaching, she would call the altar call. If she didn't call it, Bishop would get up and he'll call it. So, every Sunday, there was somebody, I'm telling you, every Sunday somebody was on the altar tarrying. There was not a Sunday that went by that nobody was not on that altar getting saved. That's why we had so many saved souls in our church. And as soon as somebody got saved, next thing you know, somebody else was coming in the church to get saved. I mean, people was coming in there. But anyway, with that being said, so now, um, when I went to church Sunday, that Sunday, after Bishop Mingo said that, I got saved. I mean, I, I got on the altar. I tapped. And I'm going to be honest with you, when ever I will go to the altar, my heart would be so hurting because I'm already going through some stuff. So just think, remember what I said earlier in the video? I was so overwhelmed. I was feeling lonely. And I started thinking about if I lose God, God could lose mommy. Then be by myself because I already know my father don't care nothing about me. I don't know where my mother is. My husband going on about his business. My kids is too little to even understand or calculate what what I'm going through. They, I'm not going to say they couldn't do nothing. But at, my, at that time, my mind was saying they can't really do nothing. So I'm going to let somebody else take care of them, you know. And then I would say, no, 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 those are my kids. God gave me those kids. I'm going to take care of them to the best of my ability. So all of this was going on. So I was already crying in the house. I was already, That's why I was on the floor, because I could cry more better on the floor in my little privacy. Nobody don't have to hear me in my bed, and the kids don't have to hear me. So I go over here. I'll be in, this, in, the, in the living room on the floor. They can't see me because the couch is there, and I can boo-hoo my little life out, <laughs> my little heart out. So I was already broken. So when I got on the altar, I just broke down. So, okay, with that being said. So now we go on. Okay, so now the reason why I was putting that in because when Kershaw came in, I wasn't there. So she didn't know too much about me, right? Everybody was there already. Bishop, Bishop is past the, past the Glover. Bishop is Pastor, Pastor Anderson now. Pastor Glover is Elder Glover. Elder Robinson is Evangelist Robinson. And everybody else was sisters, including myself. Right? Uh, Evangelist Anderson was there, which was Sister Anderson. So when I walked back in the church, we had Missionary Smallwood in there, along with, well, she didn't have her. She didn't have her her foster kids yet. So when I walked in, I only saw her. So I was like wondering who she was. Because she had a she had a um a, a, a relationship with Bishop with the pastor, let me put it that way. And when I say pastor, stay in the stay where I am. We are talking about Bishop Anderson being the pastor at that time after Bishop Mingo died. So when I walked in, when I walked in the church and I went downstairs, I, you know, because they ate, we would have food at, they might as well start that back again because the COVID is like lifted per se. So um, we, we would eat after service there. I mean, after morning service. So when I went downstairs and I'm absorb, absorbing, I'm observing everybody, right? And what I was observing was to see if everybody was still in the same perspective 
as when Bishop Mingo was here. Now, I don't know. I think Missionary Smallwood would testify and say she didn't know of her. But she did meet her, but she didn't know of her. So I don't really know whether she was in the church a little bit while Bishop Mingo was alive. Because I think once she got sick, she couldn't too much come to church. See, I was out of the church, so I didn't get to experience and see her when she was sick, doing her sick time. So um, anyway, so... I get to see and I see this 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 lady, young, nice, nice looking in a sense, maybe in her early forties or fifties, uh well well body proportion, I'm saying this for a reason. Well body proportion. She had a high backside and all this, you know. And I'm seeing this woman tendering to pass the I keep saying Pastor Club, Pastor Anderson. And I'm sitting there and I'm watching and I'm saying to myself, who is this lady? Now I'm seeing wifey sitting over there silence of the lambs, right? And I'm like, who is this person that's all up in Pastor Anderson's face? Now automatically, the... Now, remember, I, I went out and came back and went out and came back. So, I'm not really knowing what time this was, right? Whether it was a save time or whether it was a after backsliding, coming back to church time. But either way, within me, I was aggravated with him. I was like, how dare you treat your wife that way? How dare you put so much time into this woman in front of your wife? You have no respect for your wife. And wifey just sitting in on me, I don't play that. I, you ain't sitting up in front of me entertaining another woman. One of us is leaving, and it ain't going to be me. And it wasn't, and, it, and, and, and the reason why I say it like that is because, not because I'm first priority, meaning that I'm married to him first. So you know how they say, first, they even got movies, first wives club, you know, first wife club or whatever. It wasn't even all about that. It was about the respect. And if you don't demand respect, you won't get respect. So in some aspects, you got to demand it. So I really wanted to go and fend for her. Like, what are you doing? Who are you? Who the crazy you are? Go sit down somewhere. Mother Anderson, you come over here and sit. You know, that's how I felt. But I didn't say nothing because nobody else was saying nothing. Uh, uh, our elder Glover was sitting there and saying nothing. Our mother Giles was sitting there not saying nothing. Uh, uh, our, our pastor Anderson was laid back, rear back. Give me some of that cake. Give me some of that them beans. Give me some of that chicken. And she over there whispering in her, his ear. And um, he'll start laughing. And I look at Mother Anderson, and Mother Anderson look away. Mother Anderson don't know I'm looking at her, but I'm 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 I'm, I'm checking this out. I'm checking all this out, right? So Sundays go on and the same thing go on and the same thing go on. So now I'm back in the church. I come back to church. I'm coming to church um, constantly. Oh, I forgot my grandmother was there. My grandmother hadn't died yet. My grandmother died in 95. So 89, 89, less than 10 years, right? 89, 89, 99, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. She, she lived for six years after her sister. Right? So, my sister died in 89 and she died in 95. So, my grandmother's sitting there. So, my grandmother's sitting at the table. Right? Bishop is sitting over here. Pastor Anderson. Over here. I don't know who's over here. Next to Bishop is... Right. Next to Bishop Anderson, there's a chair here. Oh, that's mother. That's my grandmother. And next to my grandmother is Pastor Glover. And next to Pastor Glover is mother. Is um missionary Smallwood, or, or should I say missionary Smallwood's on this side? So he, she's sitting in front of her, past front of my grandmother. No, I don't even think so. 
I don't know who's sitting there. Maybe Mother Giles is sitting over here. Right, Mother Giles is sitting over here. Uh, my grandmother's sitting over here. Pastor Glover's sitting next to my grandmother. Next to Pastor Glover is Missionary Smallwood. And next to Missionary Smallwood is Mother Anderson. Now, Mother Anderson should have been sitting over here next to Mother Giles. Or even, not even next to Mother Giles. She should have been sitting in the chair Mother Giles was sitting in. Because she is supposed to be the helpmate to her husband. But I guess she felt like, I ain't no helpmate, so I'm going to sit at the end of the table. But she wasn't sitting at the end. She was sitting on the side. So anyway, making a long story short in that perspective. So now it goes on. So as time goes on in these churches, in my church, different things started to happen. But this lady, Missionary Smallwood, is still up in Bishop Anderson's face. Right? She's taking care of him. She became, she, she, I guess time went on. She became over the pastor's age. So here's the thing. They started producing new rules and regulations in House of Prayer. They started entirely entitled, giving people titles that did not deserve it. And didn't have nothing to do with God. So that's another reason why the church is where it is today. Because once Bishop Mingo died, everybody started doing, leadership started doing what they wanted to do. And then one leadership said, oh, when I get in leadership, I'm going to change things. I'm going to change things. Didn't say they was going to change things for the better. But that's what I thought. I thought they was going to change things for the better. But once that leadership got into leadership, along with the other leaderships, it, it got worse and worse. It started going curving downhill very fast. Now, when Bishop Anderson got into it, it kind of like was not so fast because he stayed for about two years, two to three years in that perspective of Bishop Mingo. And by now, by this time, Missionary Smallwood's children, foster kids, which I thought was her children when I got there, was in the church now. She had three foster kids in the church. Sammy was already gone, which is my cousin, which was Bishop Mingo's niece, Mother Giles' son. He was gone out of church. He was in the service. So he hadn't completely left, but he was completely gone. <laughs> and um, let me see. He was, he was um, elder at the time. So if I'm correct, I think Bishop Mingo may have ordained him as elder. Because he was supposed to, I think he was supposed to go into the place of Bishop Mingo if she passed away. So she had three elders in place, no lie. So... Now that, I, now that I'm remembering that, Bishop Anderson could put three elders in place. Now, he got Elder Odom, I mean Elder Robinson, and now he got Elder Odom, even though he didn't ordain her. This is somebody that was ordained by somebody else. And I want y'all to tell me, if somebody is ordained any type of title from another pastor, bishop, or whatever, is they considered over your congregation? Over you? And put it that way. Is they considered over you? Or they are considered an elder over the church that the person ordained them? Or is it like marriage? You can get married by any pastor you choose, but you don't have to be a part of their church. Is that the same thing? But anyway, you'll see he's getting a little brighter. Let me go heat up my coffee. I got to get dressed. I got to go pay a bill. That's of importance. But I want to finish the story. I'm going to take y'all with me so y'all won't feel lonely when I walk out and leave y'all. Looking at my dolls. Looking at my dolls. <laughs> All right. Michael in. 
so um it got me okay so yeah we had past past bishop bishop mingo had elder anderson elder jones and elder jowls yep so there was three options to become assistant pastor but because bishop anderson stayed there you know, I mean, to be honest, Elder Jones stayed there too. Elder Jones didn't go nowhere. Yep, Elder Jones stayed right there with Bishop Mingo. And now I understand when we had that meeting and he went in and he had said something about the women. But it was in it being a pastor and he wasn't staying. So I was feeling like that's how he felt from the beginning when Bishop Mingo was, when Bishop Mingo was um, over church. But I understood, I guess now, because it's coming to me more clearly, that it didn't have anything to do with I'm finding out it didn't have anything to do with Bishop Mingo. Uh, as a woman, he loved it, Bishop Mingo. He loved it, Mother Wilson. His kids was, she was the godparent to his kids, and I was the god sister, right? So I helped raise his kids just like my grandmother did, right? It had to do with Pastor Glover. So we'll leave that be. So now, um... The elders are there, still in place after Bishop Mingo dies. There is a lot of stuff that began to happen in the church. Again, I'm out of the church. I done left the church. Because Bishop Anderson done said something to me and my child, my children, his kids was first priority of the church. They were, let me see his kids, they learned his drama, no. His kids led the service, his kids got so much recognition in the church, so much recognition. Um, his wife wasn't getting no recognition, to be honest. Uh, it was all about him, his son, Evangelist Anderson, right? Once the Joneses left, because when the Joneses was there, it was the Joneses that was getting the recognition. But it was respectably. Sammy would come and Sammy would, you know, play and all of that. But his recognition was to the Joneses. I wasn't his family, so I, could underst I understand now why he didn't so much cater to me. Because he knew I wasn't family. I didn't know that. So I had no idea he was a, his mother was adopted by Bishop Mingo. And my aunt, which we call, which they call String Bean, and I called um, Aunt Virginia, was not really my aunt. Her and Mother Giles were sisters. So Renee, which was the daughter of Mother Giles, Mommy took care of because Aunt Virginia had her and she took her in to take care of along with me. Now, I'm blood, but I was treated and raised up in the perspective of being the, the out, outcast. Even though I knew my father was my grandmother's son, when it came to being around Mother Giles, Sammy, um, Bishop Anderson children, my cousin Renee, Aunt Virginia going to her house, I was treated as a like a really like an outcast. So I grew up feeling like I wasn't a part of the family. You know, so I would separate myself from the side of the family. 
and that would make them mad and pick on me and bully me because they felt like I was feeling like I was better than them. And in all reality, I was because I was the family. But we ain't going to go there, right? So we're going to keep this under a good perspective. So now, moving right along. So I come back to the church and I begin to see difference things. I begin to see that they are starting to show shade against the Joneses. And I always did like the Joneses. Not only because, I, I should say one main reason is because my grandmother loved them. So whoever my grandmother loved, I loved. As long as you treat my grandmother right, I'm going to love you. When you start throwing dots and stones, I'm going to stand in front of them and catch them and throw them back at you. And you know what? When I throw them, you going to fall. <laughs> so everything was fine between them and me, you know? We got real close. When we would go out to sing, Elder Jones would come. He would play for me. When I would come back, I would sing. I'll never forget that Sunday I went up there to sing. And I sang, um, the first time I sang the song, it was like a medley, but it was only two songs. It was, um, mm, something beautiful, something good. I sang that song one. And then I went into a song that his wife would sing. And I sang, um, what was it? Um, um, what is it? I was born to serve the Lord. From the dust of the earth, God. And I'll never forget that Sunday. We had a lot of people in our church. And this is before the Joneses left. This is like maybe a Sunday or two before they left. So I was just singing the song. I was nervous. You know, I, I wasn't being dramatic, meaning like how I do now. I'm all, Once I start singing... The Holy Ghost in me take over, so I, I become relaxed in the Holy Ghost. So I use my hands and I, you know, interact with the audience to to get the message across of what I'm singing. But back then, you know, I was younger and I would just sing very timid. So, timidly rather. And so, Elder Jones get tar and his son pick playing the drums enhance it the song and I never forget if I'm correct in memory Evangelist Jones she used to sit in that first seat facing the choir stand and boy on the side of the choir stand and she was like really amazed because that was her song and I may not have sang it like she sang it but I sang it in tune wise and Elder Jones picked that guitar he put a hurting on that guitar and his son David played the drums to the fullest and everybody was like there was this lady there from Bible way I never forget her I don't know if she well ain't no Bible way so she don't go to Bible way no more but she was so fascinated with the song you know she Wanted me to sing this song all the time. I went to Bible Way and she asked me to sing it. I mean, she came back to our church a, a few years after that, a few Sunday. Well, I say a few months after that. But it never sounded the same because Elder Jones wasn't there. You know, it was a song, I, I, I guess, from Barbados, you know, that they sang in their country. And I sang it and he knew how to, oh, that man tore that song up. He 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 was a good guitarist, he was. He was. I love when the Spirit of God got on him. Lord Jesus, that man will pick that guitar and he'll be in that corner praising God. Whew. Elder Jones, if you ever see this, you are your wife or your children. I miss y'all. Really miss y'all. Really miss y'all. I wish y'all could have stayed, you know, to help uplift House of Prayer. Because we need you. We need you. I need you. Bishop Mingo needs you. Mother Wilson needs you. So, okay. With that being said, so now, Bishop 
is so intense with hats on head. You cannot sing in the choir unless you save or on the altar. You cannot play any instrument unless you on the altar or save. And you definitely can't bring no message in there unless you save. Right? So that went on for years. As long as I was in there at that time. Because I went out again. And um, you couldn't do nothing. And I'm not knocking the nothing part. I have no issues with that. Because I raised up in that with that perspective. But never so, never said from the pulpit. It never was said from the pulpit that you had to wear a hat. It never was said from the pulpit that you couldn't wear jewelry, you couldn't wear pants, you couldn't wear makeup. At that time, it wasn't really brought into the church, into our church. Nobody really wore makeup. Nobody really, well, people still wore pants because Missionary Samoa had her kids in pants. Um, Elder Robinson kids was already wearing pants. When she came in, she went and took all the pants. She used to testify about it. She don't testify about it. She don't say nothing about it now. But for a while, she used to testify and say, I went in there and I, I cleaned out their closet and I threw away their pants and all that stuff she said. And um, never too much about jury. So I remember having, well, I'm not going to put that in there at the moment because it's not about me. I'm talking about, but anyway, so now. Moving forward, I left out the church, I come back, I get connected with Missionary Smallwood Foster Kids. These three children, one of them was a drummer. One of the guy, one of them, she had two girls and she had three girls. I think one of the girls was her blood child. I'm always confused. I really don't know. And that blood child had a autistic child. And she took care of that child. Very seldom the child would come to church. But during the day and during the course of the week, she would take care of the child. I think that's the lot that, that weighed her down. And it's she's paying for it now. Mm -hmm. Because that was, I believe that was a lot of strain. Not only on her heart, but on her body and her mind. And now she's at a place where she really ain't got nobody taking care of her. And it's sad. That's why I say you, you do all you can for these kids. And then when you get down where you can't do nothing, they leave you down. They don't want nobody else to say nothing to you while you down. Right? But they, they can treat you any kind of way. But as soon as somebody treats you wrong, then they want to act like they, they love you so much. Okay. I'm going to leave that alone. So now, um, it was all about Missionary Smallwood. See, Missionary Smallwood was the key to House of Prayer because she was connected to Bishop, Pastor Anderson. And then she got buddy buddies with Mother Anderson. Me personally, don't come trying to be my friend and you trying to steal my husband. And I ain't gonna even say you're trying to steal him. You done stole him because if he is staying allegedly in your house. Well, I ain't gonna say allegedly, this is a fact. In your house, more than you staying in my house, more than he's staying on his job, and you up in his, he's up in your house, more than he's supposed to be up there. You fixing dinner for him. You walking around in an unpresentable way to him, knowing that he is your pastor. And knowing that his wife is in the church, I'm not going to say it was, I'm not going to say it's right, but at least have some respect for the other woman, which half the time the mistresses don't. And um, at least when she come to the church, you act like you ain't doing nothing. But she was so bold. See, that's why I say don't, do not play with God. I don't care how much you dislike a saved person. You don't know, if you don't know how saved they are, leave them alone. Don't say nothing about them. Don't mess with them. Now, whether Mother Anderson, at the time Sister Anderson, whether Sister Anderson 
and Pastor Anderson was having marital problems, that's none of your business. You ain't got no right being all up him when he got a wife right in the church. And what got me is that the church members are sitting there and not saying nothing. See, that's why God didn't let me be in the church at that time. See, now I'm not going for nothing. Anything foolish, any kind of foolishness come up in that church, I hit it right on the nail. Hold on, I'll be back.